nearly 77% of black and brown students attending MPS cannot read, write, or do math proficiently. Let me put this into perspective. 77 out of every 100 black and brown students cannot read, write, or do math after graduating from MPS. The city of Minneapolis is the one that actually puts the funds in the program. And so we want the city to expand the program to any, any child within Minneapolis Public Schools who is eligible, eligible, but also any resident in Minneapolis who's eligible because it's city money, it's city funds, and your child's school status shouldn't matter if you're eligible for this program. Um, so that's why we're, I'm here. I've asked you all to be here. The ESSER funding, um, not really authentic community engagement. Um, what are they gonna spend this money on? You need to get a literacy plan that's based and evident that are in the science of reading. Um, you need to fire your racist teachers. You need to have a protocol for students when teachers or students and parents encounter racist teachers, racist staff, racist, racist adults in the building. What is the protocol and what is the accountability for, for when that happens? On the subject of the ESSER money, which is being presented tonight in the district's proposal, less than five million of it is devoted specifically to literacy training, materials, curricula, or initiatives. And the district is receiving over a hundred million dollars, has identified literacy as both a huge challenge in the district and a priority, but these dollars don't reflect either of those things. And so I think whatever we can do before they apply their you know, stamp of approval to these dollars to push our board of ed members to, you know, pump the frickin' brakes and look at ways that literacy can be an actual investment with these dollars instead of an afterthought. And right now they're an afterthought. Nearly 77% of black and brown students attending MPS cannot read, write, or do math proficiently. Let me put this into perspective. 77 out of every 100 black and brown students cannot read, write or do math after graduating from MPS. And the most recent article released on proficiency rate states that according to the district statistics, 23% of fewer than one in four students of color were proficient in math, while three out of four white children met the basic standards indicating math proficiency. Even more astounding, only 28% of students of color were proficient in reading. Nearly 79% of white students were reading at the expected grade level. This is a result of the 2018-2019 data released by you all. My name is Kulia Pringle. I'm the Midwest Regional Coordinator for the National Parents Union, and I'm here to speak on a few different um, items today. E is supposed to be testifying with former NPS students. They're not able to make it tonight because they are sick, um, but I was here to support her in her effort to have NPS fire the, your racist teachers. E had a racial encounter, a racial incident with a teacher and there has been no accountability for that teacher. That teacher is currently being placed and we don't know what harm or what black child that teacher is gonna be placed in front of. My next, my next um, issue, uh, the main reason why I'm here is to have MPS take academic outcomes for black children, indigenous children, Latinx children very seriously. You have not came up with the evidence-based literacy plan yet. I've spoken to your senior officers, um, both Dr. Fearing and senior officer Moore and I'm still confused. Um, I've looked at the ESSER plans and the dollars where the money's gonna be spent. I'm still confused. Um, parents are confused, the students are confused, everybody's confused. We don't know what MPS's priorities are when it comes to these, this funding. First, I wanna just be here to support eFeast and their demand for dignity in MPS classrooms and accountability for teachers who don't grant that dignity in MPS classrooms. I have had the pleasure of meeting E, and if that's if that is a young person we aren't serving in our classrooms, then we gotta seriously consider what we're doing in our classrooms. If it weren't for the Minnesota law that requires all districts to report their efforts to identify students with characteristics of dyslexia, there would have been no discussion of the importance of explicit systematic literacy instruction, especially in elementary school, where our children's development is most important to guide how they're gonna live their lives. When kids can't read, you're almost guaranteed either to die, live a lifestyle of poverty, or end up in prison. Thank you. Thank you.